بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نو آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ ود یو اینس اینڈ اینل کنال اینڈ اٹس ڈیزیزز ٹوڈے آئی ول ڈسکس ود یو اینیٹمی آف دی اینل کنال اینس اینڈ اٹس انویسٹیگیشن اینل کینال اٹ از دی موسٹ ڈسٹل پورشن آف دی ایلیمنٹری کینال جی آئی ٹی اٹس ایکسٹینڈس فار اے ڈسٹینس اباؤٹ تھری ٹو فور سینٹی میٹر فرام دی اینو ریکٹل رنگ ٹو دی ہیری اسکین آف دی اینل ورچ اینو ریکٹل رنگ اور بنڈل از دی مسکولر جنکشن بٹوین ریکٹم اینڈ اینل کینال اینڈ اٹ از فیلٹ with the finger as a thickened ridge when we, inter- we do a digital rectal examination. Anus provides continence for flatus and feces. Also, the function of the anus, anal canal is that it provides continence for flatus and feces which is a blessing. No, in a canal, sometimes we say divide it to the surgical anal canal and what is anatomical anal canal. Now the surgical anal canal, here you can see the anal canal is the terminal portion of the intestinal tract. It begins at the anorectal junction, the point passing through the levator and eye muscle pelvic diaphragm. and is about 4 cm long and terminates at the anal verge. Here you can see, this is from here to here, is it is the surgical anal canal. Now, what is anatomical anal canal? When you say anatomical, this basically extends from the dentate line to the anal verge. From here, this is dentate line, then at the here at the anal verge so this part is called anatomical anal canal if we now commemorate the relation of the anal canal anteriorly anterior to the anal canal in male is the bulb of urethra in female it is the perineal body and vagina Posteriorly, anal canals is related to coccyx and puborectalis muscle. Laterally lies the ischiorectal fossa containing inferior hemorrhoidal vessels and pudendal nerve. Anal canal is surrounded below by external and internal sphincter muscles. No. Oh. What is puborectalis muscle or pubo, another term sometimes uses the anorectal ring. The anorectal ring marks the junction between the rectum and the anal canal. It is formed by the joining of the puborectalis muscle, the deep external sphincter, conjoint longitudinal muscle and the highest part of the internal sphincter. As I told you, Uh, that anorectal ring can be clearly felt digitally especially on its posterior and lateral aspects so this was about uh, uh, anorectal ring now if we come to the puborectalis muscle this is the um, part of the funnel shaped muscular pelvic diaphragm maintains the angle between the anal canal and the rectum and hence is an important component in the continuous mechanism. So, puborectalis muscle is an important component in the continuous mechanism related to anal canal. The muscle derives its nerve supply from the sacral somatic nerves and is functionally indistinct from the external anal sphincter. The position and length of the anal canal as well as of the angle of the anorectal junction 
depends to a major extent on the integrity and strength of the puborectalis muscle sling. It gives off fibers that contribute to the longitudinal muscle layer. So this was about uh, puborectalis. Its concept is important because it contributes to the continence mechanism. Then we come to the sphincters of the anal canal. Anal canal has two sphincters. One is internal sphincter and then external sphincter. Both surround the anal canal. Now, internal sphincter. Internal sphincter is basically formed by in, it is a, it's an involuntary muscle. So it's an involuntary sphincter. It's thickening. What is uh, what is internal sphincter? It is basically thickening of circular muscle of lower part of the rectum, which continues below as internal sphincter. Internal sphincter surrounds about three fourth of the upper part of the anal canal, and its lower end corresponds with Hilton line. And here we can also feel the uh, interest uh, ridge which marks the intersphincteric plane. Middle part of the internal sphincter it corresponds with the pectinate line. Internally, the sphincter is separated from mucous membrane by internal internal venous plexus. So here you can see this is the internal sphincter. It is the internal sphincter and it is basically continuation of the circular muscle of the rectum below and internally it is separate from the mucous membrane of the anal canal by internal venous plexus. Externally it is separated from the external muscle by a conjunct sheath. I come to go to the previous slide. Here you can see this is the external sphincter and this is the internal sphincter. And externally it is separated from this by the conjunct sheath here. So externally internal sphincter is separated from the external muscle by the conjunct sheath which is derived from the levator and eye and the longitudinal muscle of the rectum. When this sphincter is exposed per op, it is pearly white in color. Pearly white fibers can be seen and this is especially uh, is seen when we are going to, uh, doing a lateral uh, internal sphincterotomy for chronic anal fissure. Now the nerve supply, this sphincter is supplied by the autonomic nerves. Autonomic nerves they supply this sphincter. It also receives intrinsic non-adinergic and non-cholinergic fibers and stimulation of which causes internal sphincter relaxation. So this was about uh, uh, internal sphincter. So these fibers which I talked about the non-cholinergic, non-adinergic fibers and stimulation of which causes relaxation, release of uh, uh, when these fibers they are stimulated they release neurotransmitter nitric oxide which induces internal sphincter relaxation. Now we come to the external sphincter. Internal sphincter is voluntary. It is striated muscle. It surrounds the entire length of the anal canal. We, some, we divide the external sphincter into three parts. Subcutaneous, superficial and deep parts. Now, subcutaneous part, the external sphincter, basically it forms the bulk of the anal sphincter complex. And although traditionally it has been divided, subdivided into deep, superficial and subcutaneous portion, 
it is a single muscle which is variably divided by lateral extensions from the longitudinal muscle so these uh, the longitudinal muscle this divides into three parts as i told you subcutaneous superficial and the deep part subcutaneous part here is this is the subcutaneous part you can see this is the subcutaneous part which is a flat band around the anus it is separated from the peri anal skin by external venous plexus here lies the external venous plexus it is separate from that this cutaneous part of the external sphincter superficial part this part is the superficial part it is elliptical in shape it arises from the tip of the coccyx and inococcygeal raphe it is inserted anteriorly into the perineal body Continuing with the deep, uh, the external sphincter, D part, it is annular in shape. It is, it surrounds the anorectal junction. It has no bony attachment. It is inserted into the perineal body anteriorly. Its nerve supply, it is the rectal branch of the inferior rectal branch of pudendal nerve, which supplies this, uh, this muscle. Also, the peri perineal branch of four secular nerve also supplies the uh, the D part of the external sphincter. As you can see, basically, it is a voluntary sphincter and it has sciatic nerve supply. Here you can see the division of external sphincter. Here you can see that the and so, superficial and the D part and the subcutaneous part. Now, what is intersphincteric? These concepts, they are very important when dealing with the way on operating on the anal canal and it, uh, talking about the diseases of the uh, anal canal. Now, what is intersphincteric plane? Between the external sphincter muscle laterally and the longitudinal muscle medially exists a potential space, the intersphincteric plane. This plane is important as it contains intersphincteric anal glands. So keep in mind what is the significance of this plane? It has intersphincteric anal glands and is also a route for the spread of pus which occurs along the extensions from the longitudinal muscle layer. So the plane can be opened up surgically to provide access for operation in the sphincter muscle. So, so, so this intersphincteric plane we can feel on digital examination and this is important because uh, pus, uh, spreads along this uh, intersphincteric plane which is between the internal sphincter and the external sphincter. What is longitudinal muscle? Longitudinal muscle is a direct continuation of the smooth muscle of the outer muscle coat of fractum. And this is also augmented in the upper part by striated muscle fibers originating from the medial components of the pelvic floor that is uh, levator ni muscle. Most of the muscle continues cordially before splitting into multiple terminal septa that surrounds the muscle bundles of the subcutaneous portion of the external sphincter to insert into the skin of the lower most part of the anal canal and the adjacent perineal skin. So here, here you can see This, this is the, in the previous slide I told you what is the longitudinal muscle. This is very important. The concept of a longitudinal muscle is very important because the, what is the function of this muscle? During defecation, its contraction widens the anal canal lumen, flattens the anal cushions and shortens the anal canal and evolves the anal margin.
So, so you can see oh, function of the longitudinal muscle is a very important concept in the continence mechanism that this longitudinal muscle gives multiple septa externally, internally, going to the subcutaneous, going into the uh, attaching to the mucosa and some mucosa of the anal canal. So, when there is subsequent relaxation which allows the anal cushions to distend again and thus contribute in to an airtight seal. So the function of, what is the function of the longitudinal muscle? This was, it, it causes contraction, its contraction causes widening of the anal canal lumen, flattens the anal cushions, shortens the anal canal and averts the anal margin. Now, what is the interior of the anal canal? This interior of the anal canal is divided by pectineal line and Hilton line into three areas. Here you can see, here you can see this is the, the, the this anal canal is basically divided into three parts by the dented or pectinate line and Hilton's line. So, upper part is about 15 millimeter in length this is above the pectinate and dentate line intermediate part again it is f about 15 millimeter in length one third and it is between dentate line and hilton line the lower eight millimeter which is the anal verge lower part so here you can see this is this is the upper one third this is the middle because this is the dentate line and this is the pectinate line. So here, these two lines, they divide into upper, middle and the lower one third of the anal canal between Hilton line and the dental pectinate line. Now what is pectinate line? Basically, it's a mucocutaneous junction of the anal canal. It corresponds with the position of anal valves. Pectinate, another name for pectinate line is dentate line. It is situated at the middle of the internal sphincter. Dentate or pectinate line is, a, is important both morphologically and surgically as it prevents the site of fusion of proctorium and post allantoic gut embryologically. This concept. So, this is junction between proctorium and the post allantoic gut. It divides anal canal into upper and lower areas, proctorium, which are different in development, blood supply, lymph drainage, and nerve supply. So, this dentate line, pectinate line, basically divides the anal canal into upper and lower areas, which has separate blood supply, lymphatic drainage, nerve supply because neurologically they have different development. Hilton line, it is a color contrast between, uh, between bluish pink area above and the black skin below. This line is represented by intersphincteric groove at the lower end of the internal sphincter. So the lower end of the intersphincteric uh, lower end of the internal sphincter which is marked by we, he, this we can feel with our digital finger while doing digital ER and we feel when doing uh, lateral internal sphincterotomy we feel this uh, groove intersphincteric groove so this line is represented by that the Hilton line it indicates lower end of the internal sphincter Hilton line here, here you can see this is the Hilton line it is, this is the internal sphincter. It is lower end of the internal sphincter marked by the Hilton line. This is intersphincteric groove. The, here is the intersphincteric plane. This one. And here come the longitudinal muscle giving septa internally, externally and giving support to the anal canal. Anal glands may be found in some mucosa and intersphenteric plane. Normally, they are about 10 in number. 
again i repeat anal glands they are ductal glands ducts they open with the ducts anal they are found in the submucosa and intersphincteric plane they these glands they drain via duct into an and to anal sinuses at the level of dentate line and function of anal gland they secrete lot of mucus which lubricates the inner canal to ease defecation potential or what is the clinical significance of these anal glands basically they are the potential source of anal sepsis infection basically starts in the anal glands which spreads and causes number of perineal abscesses which is perineal abscess ischiorectal abscess and also cause is a source of chronic and becomes chronic and is a source of fistula formation fistula in anum these are anal gland this is the clinical significance of this gland which are situated in the submucosa and the intersphincteric plane now if we talk about the lining of the anal canal the pink columnar epithelium the upper part of the anal canal is lined by the columnar epithelium the rectum the this this columnar epithelium lining stands in the rectum extends through the anal rectal ring into the surgical anal canal so passing downwards the mucous membrane becomes cuboidal upper part it is columnar then lower down it becomes cuboidal and then it is red in color which was pink when it was columnar whereas above the anal valves it is plum colored just below the level of the anal valve there is a and there is an abrupt abrupt wavy transition to stratified squamous epithelium which is parchment color so these are the different colors which are due to change in the epithelium upper part by columnar epithelium then it becomes cuboidal and the lower down it is the stratified squamous epithelium so uh, what is the I mean, what are mucosal suspensory ligaments parks describe these increased density of fibers that inserted into mucosa of the anal crypts at the level of dental line as mucosal suspensory ligaments they provide support this separates superior portal and the inferior systemic hemorrhoidal plexuses this these mucosal suspensory ligaments what is the blood supply of the anal canal here you can see here you can see the blood supply the blood supply to the anal canal is through superior middle and inferior rectal vessel this is the concept of blood supply to the anal canal a ram above it is the superior rectal vessel then it becomes here you can see the middle rectal and the inferior pudendal artery so superior rectal middle rectal and the inferior rectal artery also called the internal pudendal artery here it basically supplies arterial supply to the to the uh, anal canal on the venous drainage anal veins are distributed into a similar fashion to the arterial supply the upper half of the anal canal is drained by the superior rectal veins tributaries of the inferior mesenteric vein and thus the the the, the portion of porto system mesenteric venous system so the blood supply goes into that porto systemic a venous system and the middle rectal veins which drain into the internal iliac veins the inferior rectal veins drain the lower half of the anal canal and the subcutaneous peri uh, perineal plexus of vein they eventually join the internal 
iliac vein on each side. So this was the uh, uh, venous drainage of the, which again it accompanies the named arteries, superior rectal, minor rectal, the inferior rectal veins, and the here is the at the dental line there is a junction of portos systemic uh, venous drainage system. Though two system, it is the lymphatic drainage. Very important. Upper half of the anal canal drains into post rectal and then they go into the periotic lymph nodes. So upper half of the anal canal drains upwards into the post rectal para, uh, uh, post rectal lymph nodes. From there, along the inferior mesenteric vessels, they go to the periotic lymph nodes. Lower half of the anal canals, lower half of the anal canal, here from here the lymphatic, they go into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes, then into the deep inguinal lymph nodes. So this was the concept of lymphatic drainage of the anal canal. Upper half, go, the lymph goes upwards, ultimately the periotic lymph nodes along the inferior mesenteric vessels. Lower, it goes into the inguinal lymph nodes. This must be kept in mind. This is important when we are talking about the cancer of the anal canal. While doing the, uh, while doing the examination of the anus, what position we usually put the patient in. It is the left lateral position while doing perineal examination, digital rectal examination, different positions they are done. Left lateral same position, prone jackknife or knee elbow position and then the lithotomy position. This is, this is you can see this is the same position left lateral. This is the knee elbow position, good position for digital rectal examination, perineal exam. This is the lithotomy position, again a position in which the anal can, canal can be examined. These are three important positions for a, examination of perineal area and the anal canal by a digital rectal examination. When we, we do an uh, examination, basically it is the inspection and then it is the digital examination with index finger. Other, uh, in, and in addition to the digital rectal examination, we can examine the anal canal with proctoscope. Proctoscopy is performed with the patient in the same position as left lateral, jackknife, uh, knee elbow position and the uh, lithotomy position. It allows a detailed inspection of the distal rectum and anal canal. Minor procedures can also be carried out through this instrument, proctoscope, treatment of hemorrhoids by injection or bending, then we can take biopsy. So this is, this is examination of the anal canal by proctoscope. It is diagnostic as well as therapeutic this this uh, use of proctoscope this is this is you can see the proctoscope which is used for the examination of uh, anal canal sigmoidoscopy this is another although sigmoidoscopy is strictly an examination of the rectum it should always be carried out even when an anal lesions has been confirmed so to exclude any pathology ab above. Rectal pathology, for example, colitis, carcinoma is frequently associated with anal lesions. That is, these lesions, fissure, fistula, hemorrhoid, they are sometimes secondary. That means some underlying colitis, malignancy, and these conditions, they, they are basically secondary to these carcinoma and colitis. So, if you go to the summary of of the anatomy of the anal canal. The anal canal anatomy, we can summarize here. The internal sphincter is composed of circular 
non striated mass involuntary muscle external sphincter is composed of striated voluntary muscle supplied by the pudendal nerve extension from the longitudinal muscle layer support the sphincter complex the space between sphincter is known as the intersphincteric plane the superior part of the external sphincter fuses with the puborectalis, puborectalis muscle which is essential for maintaining the anorectal angle necessary for continence the lower part of the anal canal is lined by the sensitive squamous epithelium blood supply to the anal canal is via superior middle and inferior rectal vessels lymphatic drainage of the lower half of the anal canal goes to inguinal lymph nodes so this is the summary which i presented to you about the anatomy of the anal canal then then we can come to these physiological aspects and also special investigation the sphincter mechanism basically provides the ultimate barrier to the leakage of feces and its integrity can be assessed fairly simply and objectively in the physiology laboratory perineal portion and degree of descent on straining these are two markers of pelvic floor and pudendal nerve that is perineal position and degree of descent on straining these are called two markers of the the uh, markers Uh, of pelvic floor and pudendal nerve functional anal canal length resting tone which is reflective predominantly of internal sphincter activity this resting tone basically depends upon the internal sphincter activity and the squeeze of mechanism of the anal canal squeeze increment this is reflective of external sphincter function this can be measured by a variety of simple manometric techniques investigation in relation to the anal canal anal incontinence and defecation are highly complex processes keep in mind anal continence and the defecation are highly complex processes they necessitate the structural and functional integrity keep in mind this anal continence and defecation which are very complex processes they necessitate the structural and functional integrity of the cerebral autonomic and enteric nervous systems then integrity of uh, structural and functional integrity of the gastrointestinal tract especially the rectum and the pelvic floor and anal sphincter complex any of which may be compromised these are these are the different components of the the continence anal continence mechanism and defecation process the, the then the cerebral autonomic and enteric nervous system but to the gastrointestinal tract especially the rectum then pelvic floor and the anal sphincter complex so any of which may be compromised and this can lead to the disturbance of functional varying severity these different components when they are compromised obviously this this will go compromise the continence mechanism of the anal canal i repeat what are the markers of pelvic floor and pudendal nerve these are basically perineal position and degree of descent on straining these can be quantified markers of pelvic floor and pudendal nerve perineal position and degree of descent internal sphincter activity shows functional can anal canal length and resting tone so the functional anal canal length and the resting tone of the anal canal that depends upon the internal sphincter activity the structural integrity of the sphincter can be visualized with endoluminal ultrasound it's a very important investigation the structural 
integrity can be assessed with a probe inside the anal canal and this is called endoluminal ultrasonography. Neuromuscular function can be measured by assessment of conduction velocity along the pudendal nerve. Assessment of conduction velocity, this is nerve conduction study of the pudendal nerve. So neuromuscular function uh, can be assessed by this study and more pain, another method is by needle electromyogram EMG studies of the anal sphincter. So these are the two investigation which are done for, for the integrity of neuromuscular function of the anal canal. External anal sphincter uh, function they can be assessed by manometric studies. They basically reflect the squeeze increment by this study, by this manometric study, we can assess the squeeze increment reflect the, by this and this can be made by a variety of simple manometric things. This is graph basically uh, giving the squeeze increment as in the rect, this is in the, it is the anal canal part the squeeze uh, increment and this can be studied with the manometric study. Here is another graph showing the typical normal pull through manometric study of the anal canal. This is this is here from here to this anal canal where squeeze occurs. Here this cannot be seen in the rectum. This is one uh, photograph showing endoluminal ultrasonography. This, is, this shows the structural integrity of the sphincter. Here, here you, you can see this is, this is the external anal sphincter muscle and this is the internal anal sphincter. This, this one is the internal anal sphincter, internal anal sphincter, external anal sphincter. This, this one, uh, this endoluminal uh, shows external and sphincter defect caused by obstetric injury. Here this ultrasonography showing a defect post sphincterotomy, lat lateral sphincterotomy when we do the, this defect. We have cut the internal sphincter here. Electromyogram EMG studies which are done neuromuscular function can be measured by assessment of conduction velocity along the pudendal nerve on each side and more painfully by inserting needle we can do electromyogram to study the to study the muscles of the anal sphincter. Another uh, investigation which is done for uh, anal canal function is evacuation proctography. The dynamics of the defecation can be assessed by this study radiologically by evacuation proctography in which radio opaque pseudo stool is inserted into the rectum and the patient are asked to rest squeeze and there then bear down to evacuate the rectal contents under real time imaging under fluoroscope this is evacuation proctography proctography with synchronous emg Proctography combined with synchronous EMG electromyogram and the pressure studies, they yield more information about possible reasons for distorted defic for disordered defecation in an individual. Combined proctography with synchronous EMG and pressure studies yield more information about possible reasons for disordered defecation in an individual. This was all about the anal canal anatomy and then the investigation and the examination which is done for this. If you have any question, you can ask me on the WhatsApp group and I will respond to that. Thank you.